Hello everybody, you're listening to The Mighty Clustic. This is AJ and this is The Ecology of the Rot Grub uh, as a special homage to Volo's Guide to Monsters, which I just recently got in the mail. So, the Rot Grub has been around since the very beginning of Dungeons & Dragons and uh, there's a very good article by Ed Greenwood, nonetheless, um, uh, from June 1987 from Dragon Magazine number 122. And you can find the Rot Grub listed on page 208 of Volo's Guide to Monsters, or more importantly, a swarm of rot grubs, although a single rot grub is equally as dangerous. So what makes the rot grubs so uh, creepy and cool is their deadly method of boring into the heart of victims, uh, and we'll cover that in a second. So rot grubs can be found pretty much anywhere. Um, they like to lie dormant in the crypts and tombs and things like that, which is where you'll quite often find them, but you can sneak a rot grub into your game in all sorts of nefarious ways, such as a uh, an urn or a chest or box left by a wizard, for example, in his lair, um, because simply opening up a box which has got a dormant rot grub in there can activate it, and as soon as it touches uh, the flesh of a warm-blooded creature, it will begin its horrifying attack. So what exactly do these things do? Well, rot grubs, when they attack living beings, are seeking to breed. And they do this by seeking out the... Uh, they need fresh uh, flesh soaked in blood and uh, rich in oxygen in which to lay their eggs. Um, and the best place to do this is in the heart of a warm-blooded creature. So they achieve a rapid burrowing um, action by having a, a maw with successive rings of rasping razor sharp teeth at one end of their body and then they have uh, when they burrow into somebody they're not feeding they're moving very rapidly through them and they do this by ch biting off chunks passing it through the muscular middle of their body and then expelling it uh, through the end with some force so when they burrow into you there's a spit and actual little bits of flesh are, um, will blurt out of the hole along with a lot of blood as they burrow into somebody so they really are like a little pneumatic drill that go into somebody which is why they can travel so quickly into the body and what makes them so deadly this makes them a favored um, method of killing for some assassins who will simply sneak up to a, a sleeping person and drop a rot, rot grub on them uh, it does say in uh, Ed Greenwood's article that the rot grub can anesthetize the bit that they're burrowing into so they may actually um, have some sort of contact venom which will numb the area allowing them to burrow into a creature uh, very rapidly but I find it hard to believe that that would be so potent that uh, nobody would notice this thing burrowing into them because they can grow to uh, a fair amount of size um, yeah from just a they can grow up to a few inches long however mostly they are uh, quite small they basically appear like a maggot um, or a wood grub um, with um, quite th that serrated jaw in the front of it, kind of like a little lamprey. The uh, rot grubs, uh, they list them here as finger sized, but they can be slightly smaller and they can eat living or dead flesh, pretty much any organic material. So they can hang out inside of jungles and things like that, which they, they quite like warm environments, um, which are rich with uh, loam and plant life and animal life. And uh, they will seek out any. Um, animal in which to breed and they do so by burrowing into the heart and then laying a clutch of about 4 to 12 eggs and the eggs are the size of um, there are 6 to a dozen eggs and they're small green white rubbery spheres less than the size of a little fingernail um, so yeah they're quite small all rot grubs carry eggs inside them but they can't fertilize their own eggs. Other rot grubs must do this for them, and they need to do it within about 20 minutes or so of the eggs being laid. So it's quite possible if you're attacked by only one rot grub, um, it will still kill you by burrowing into your heart. Uh, but if it manages to see, if you manage to uh, cast cure, cure disease or burn it off you, um, they can't really can't really uh, hatch and create more rot grubs. But if two or more of them get into you. Uh, then that body is going to need to be burnt, otherwise it will be full of rot grubs, which um, can be quite a threat later on. They, uh, this is also one of the reasons why uh, wizards and things like that don't like them, particularly if the wizard has a, um, an aim of becoming a lich, because uh, the rot grubs will also burrow into the flesh of a dead creature if no other sustenance is around. 
So, they have uh, the swarm of rot grubs is listed as having an armor class of 8 and 22 hit points. Now, this represents the entire cluster of rot grubs which are coming at you as a swarm. Uh, they've got a speed of 5 feet on any surface, and uh, their stats are negligible. Um, they're basically non intelligent animal little predators like little insects. Um, so yeah, they've got resistance to piercing and slashing just by the fact that there's so many of them swarming around. So it's best to hit them with area attack effects such as fire or lamp oil or something like that. Uh, they're immune to being charmed, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, prone or restrained. They've got blind sight in the form of a tremor sense up to 10 feet and a passive perception of 6. They have no languages to speak of and a challenge rating of half. As a swarm, they can occupy any creature's space and vice versa, so you can walk through a swarm. Uh, the swarm can move through any opening large enough for a tiny maggot. And the swarm can't regain hit points or gain temporary hit points for any reason. When they bite, uh, it's plus zero to hit, so strike dice roll. Uh, they need to be on the target, so a reach zero. And one creature in the swarm space is hit, and the target is then infested by 1d4 rot grubs. And at the start of that target's turns, the target takes 1d6 piercing damage per rot grub infesting it. Applying fire to the bite wound before the end of the target's next turn deals one fire damage to the target and kills these rot grubs, as we're assuming all of the rot grubs. Uh, after this time, those rot grubs, if they're not burnt off by fire, are then too far under the skin or into the flesh to be burned in such a fashion. And the only way to uh, get rid of them is to use a cure disease spell. Not even a magical healing type spell will work. It needs to be a cure disease spell. If the target infested by rock globes ends its turn with zero hit points, it dies as these rock grubs burrow into its heart and kill it. So they'll successively do this damage every single round as they burrow inside doing this uh, 1d6 piercing damage per rot grub per round. So it can quickly kill even a fairly tough adventurer if they don't get to these things in time, if they don't have some means of curing themselves, if they haven't got to themselves with fire. I would say also um, an acid attack or an extreme cold, anything that will basically uh, freeze that area and kill the rot grub. Um, and you can adjudicate whatever damage that would do to the target as well, the host, as it will. Uh, and that's basically what they do. So rot grubs can then, uh, when once they've laid the eggs in the target, the eggs will burrow around, um, feed up to a large size. But if they are in a trapped environment, say a sarcophagus, they have been recorded um, staying dormant, uh, basically not moving or breathing and just going into a dormant state for up to two centuries 200 years so you can find these things in long buried crypts and tombs uh, which makes them extremely dangerous they're also it's hard to detect unless you uh, know what you're looking for that a rock grub has actually killed the target unless you go into the body and examine the heart but autopsies back in D&D um, &D times probably weren't that common so unless you can find the telltale uh, telltale wound of um, this rock grub which has bored its way into a body it may be impossible to tell that an assassin has actually killed them this way. And uh, in, anybody is uh, vulnerable to rot grubs, including peasants and things who walk around um, in particularly swamps and uh, jungles uh, with exposed skin, because any contact with exposed skin will set off the rot grub burrowing it into you. So that's it, just a short video on rot grubs for you. I'm uh, going to immerse myself back into Volo's guide and be back with another Monster Ecology video very soon. Thanks for listening, everybody.